What we have here is the Fox 599 Karambit. Uh, it's, it's really a good Karambit because one of the things that I like about it is the ring feature because that allows for retention, right? Now, the Karambit, of course, is very well known for its curved blade. On the actual Karambit, which is a folder type, it's very sharp on the inside and it's got a point right there that's going to puncture or lacerate. You have the uh, patented Emerson Wave feature there that allows it for a quick opening. For the quality made by Fox Knives Italy, it's phenomenal. It's a very good blade. At the same time, it's a folder. So it allows me to carry it concealed or unconcealed or exposed, but it's very comfortable to play with. What I love about it is for the exact same feel, there's an impact device created for it. Exact same configuration as you would, same wave feature, except of course it's not sharp. Now, why am I saying impact? Because a lot of times, you don't want to lacerate or cut anything, right? Some people would not use it as a pressure point control factor, and that's important. At the same time, it's very hard to train with this. You probably ran out of band-aids and students. So over here you have the clip and you have the wave feature right there. So let's say we have this clipped into our clothing right there. All you have is the ring that's exposed and the clip. Once you have the ring here, you pull out, it captures, immediately opens up the blade. So it gives you a direct response at the time of need. Also, you can also keep it unexposed without the clip showing. If you want to pull out the pocket, it'll catch and you can pull it out. It's important to get a trainer because in training, just like any kind of blade, you want to train with something that you're going to carry. If you're going to carry the real live blade all the time, you'd have to have something like a trainer so you don't cut yourself. It won't lacerate, you can play around and control something, can't do that with something as sharp as this. This way you can explore the possibilities of the different things that we do the Kali way. At the same time, also learn that this thing is actually a very good pressure point control impact system that you don't have to cut everything that's in front of you, that you can guide something and play with it. Like my guys over here are playing with each other with training. Who's gonna come back in class every time you get cut? You always wanna do safety first in everything that you do, including and especially weapons. All right, so what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna talk about the grips of this particular blade. There are two ways of carrying it. You have the underhand or what they call the ice pick grip or reverse grip. And you have also, for the other purpose, the overhand or the thrusting grip. Now, there are different ways of using the ring. A lot of people use the index ring for retention. It's much stronger and it really is in line with your musculature when you're punching or when you're holding a pistol. Familiarity of everything else is already found in the karambit. In this particular grip, if you need retention, then you can put your finger there. But then again, if you have your pinky finger in there and you're doing any twisting and everything else, you actually hold your pinky finger is now controlled by the karambit. You may not want that to where it can break it. Instead, you can hold it this way. But if you need retention for whatever reason, you can put it in there. But you should always be able to remove the finger. Same thing in here, have the ability to remove. When putting the finger on this particular grip, my preferred grip of carrying the karambit, you want it in between here, called the MCP. You don't want it deeper than that. Anything deeper than that will put undue stress on your own finger. If it's out here, at any point I can remove it, I can maintain motion with the karambit. There's another grip also that you may find people using, which is held this way. I don't recommend this. I don't even like it. Number one. There's a reason why the handle is contoured outside so you know where your fingers lie. There's a reason for that. If you're doing something like this, it's already gonna impair the feeling on the inside of your palm. Number two, the blade is curved in. This is very common 
to make mistakes this way. So the advantages of this for pulling in isn't there for simply lacerating. Because remember, if you understand what a karambit is, being curved, the whole pur purpose of being curved is that it forms an angle. I can still capture and control someone with this part of the curvature and not get cut. We're going to start off with this particular grip and work its way into the process. The process we're going to use is called the clock system because it gives you a point of reference that's easy for you to remember and something that you can copy and do on your own. Simply just look and think about the clock. In Kali training, you can see we have an impact weapon of using a stick or sword. So if I'm going from 1 through 7, 11 through 5, 3 to 9, 9 to 3, 5 to 11, and 7 through 1. I'm going to do the same thing with the impact around it. This way, I'm going to extend it. This is called the flail. The flail is basically throwing it like a flail. A lot of people don't understand this mechanics. They think I'm doing this. I'm not doing this at all. I'm simply showing you that this is the range I have with the karambit. By extension, I now have a range where I'm going to hit. The nice thing about the 599 is you do have that wave right there. It is metal. It'll cause some impact damage. So be careful when training with this. But once again, the first motion we're going to do is our version of long range training. Whereas if I went this way from 1 o'clock and 11 o'clock, now with the flail, I have a long range attack and a long range attack. So before we continue, let me show you what a flail movement is. What it is, I'm using momentum to go forward. So I'm throwing it forward. As soon as I throw forward, I lock my thumb in so that it doesn't come back on me. By putting my thumb here, it locks and it's faced forward. The impact is gonna be stronger now. I just reach out and I trust the weapon. Trust the weight of the weapon. This is metal. It's not plastic, it's not foam. This thing has some weight to it. So when taking the flail, I throw it forward and I slash and I go on the backhand side and I slash. And I go from three o'clock, I'm just gonna follow the clock system. Nine o'clock, five o'clock, and seven o'clock. Okay, then I can come back to the regular grip. Once again, the reason for this is after I turn into this, I can just use it as an impact weapon for long range. If I need to cut or go and use it in this particular grip, I just go back to its regular grip. How do you do that from the flail position? Simply just go back this way. Some will go around this way and others will just use momentum. It's your own preference in how you train. So this is the exercise that you would do to get the flow going. One, 11, thrust, slash. 11, one, thrust, slash. Now, understand when I say thrust, it's because I'm leading with a point. I'm thrusting inside and then I twist to get the blade out. A lot of people you see in a lot of Karambit videos, they're doing this, slash and slash through. It's probably a quick tiny laceration using only the very tip of the blade. Because if you were to puncture and penetrate the body or animal fat, you don't, you're not going to be able to go oh, over your shoulder. So I know they missed, because if you really did it on a carcass, you'll know you can't do that. So you have to know how to get the blade out of there by slashing and twisting out. So you go in, you slash and twist out. Also, on the slash out allows you to retrieve the blade for extra use to monitor something else, or in the same token, monitor something else. So on the backhand slide, you're monitoring. So slash to monitor that, slash to monitor this. Same exercise as this, I'm just doing this. See, so here, flail. On the backhand side here, flail, hank. It's just an extension of the weapon. 